Sorry, what, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm trying to see if I can. I'm just going to pick. I'm just going to pick my models up, man. That is, no, I'm just going to pick my models up. For us, it was a case of seeing what it's like to go to a tournament. So you've been doing that all event. This isn't someone's first event. This isn't somebody's first game. And this isn't a rule that you should really be getting wrong. You know, obviously, just make sure you roll, like, declare it first before you roll. Or you probably, you, you really saw me at my worst. You really did, and it was something in which it's very difficult when you're you're just not on the same page. I'm Stephen Box and I'm from Vanguard Tactics and we specialise in helping people really improve on their game and knowledge of Warhammer 40,000 and although Warhammer 40,000 is our specialism, we really love all aspects of tabletop and board games. It's had a massive impact on uh, my life, improved my mental health and it's something that we really try to promote um, and our biggest thing that we try to help with is improving the game's sportsmanship and fair play in terms of in how that impacts the wider community. So at the moment we're at Warhammer Fest, uh, it's one of the largest events in the UK, uh, put on by Games Workshop, the first ever one, I believe, uh, that's been ran to, to this scale by Games Workshop. Currently we are on day three, so I've played three days of 40k, um, seven rounds in, voice is slightly gone, um, but um, yeah, it's been a very emotional roller coaster so far. I'm here with my team, um, there's I think eight or ten players that play for my team and my team is made up of either my coaches um, or my YouTube uh, I suppose like content creators as well um, and also then we've got loads of Vanguard Tactics players that are students in our academy course as well that like to represent the team too so yeah there's quite a lot of us here as a team. There is a huge skill range I always say to people um, when I get asked oh can I play for Vanguard Tactics and if they're on the academy and they're a student I'm like yeah I want you to play. I want you to represent the brand. And I, I actually get all of my players to sign a code of conduct that they'll, you know, behave, that they'll, you know, agree to like the, the T's and C's of the tournament and they'll uphold the brand as best as they possibly can by playing the game in the right way. And um, providing they do that, I don't care if they lose every single game. Uh, so we've got a whole diverse range right the way up to our coaches. Um, and we've got some of the world's best players on our team. Um, and again, I've kind of sort of handpicked those players that are not only really, really good and they, you know, bring back gold trophies and the rest of it. What's more important is the fact that they are so humble and grounded and um, yeah, they'll just, they just want the best general to win the game and that's the, the most important thing, yeah. But it's something in which you, yeah, I suppose you become accustomed to, you can easily go to a, a local tournament, play in a 30, you know, person event, start getting some good wins in and then you start you know you start seeing your progression and the way that the tournament's structured you could go to a tournament and play one of the world's best tournament uh, players round one because it's random and then all of a sudden you'll learn from that experience and the next tournament you go to and you'll grow and grow and grow through confidence um, and it's kind of why i made my academy course was to help just speed up that process so people really feel like they're able to get to the table and play anybody anytime but yeah, there can often be a little bit of pressure. Like I fly to La the Las Vegas uh, Open to play. I uh, played at the Bay Area Open last year. Um, so I went undefeated until the last round at the LVO last year um, and just missed out on the, the, top, t the top eight. Um, BAO last year was another huge American event in San Francisco. Um, I was the only undefeated player at the end of day two. Um, and I came third at the, at the end, losing in, this, in the quarterfinals. So, there is a huge amount of pressure, especially when you're playing on stream as well. Mm. But again, it's you're never going to win every game of 40k. There could be a hard matchup. There could be a, a mission that your army just doesn't interact well on that mission or that terrain layout against a particular opponent. Not like the person, but more their army. And that's just sometimes a little bit of a rock, paper, scissors scenario, which I think you just have to be really realistic with and just understand that, hey, I'm not going to win every game. And if I do, awesome, maybe the luck was on my side that I kind of missed the, the bad matchups or I managed to get the bad matchup but on the right mission and I was able to win the game. So, um, yeah, this just something that you've got to, I suppose, take in your stride really and not get too worked up about, yeah. When I first came into the industry, I was met with a lot of, I 
I've got a very competitive background in volleyball. I've used to play national level. Uh, I've played, and I've also competed internationally in, in fitness model and bodybuilding. So I've always come from a very competitive mindset. And when I started playing this game, I thought, what's out there? What tournaments do we have? And I was met with, oh, that's cheesy. That's beardy. You're a win at all cost player. And I was stigmatized because I just wanted to play in tournaments. And I'm not like that at all. And I think it's something in which that at the start really frustrated me. And then when I actually started playing, I, could, I saw what people were on about. The game was in kind of dire straits at the point where I made a video um, and it absolutely exploded. Stephen here from Vanguard Tactics. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my opponent and his yellow card and why we need to change 40K and competitive 40k for the better. And all I did was I kind of spoke about, and it was called like my opponent and the yellow card, and I didn't name the person, and I just outlined what is happening. People are deliberately cheating, and there's a difference between accidentally getting rules wrong, that, you know, we do, it happens. And it, however, when it's consistently happening, when it's not quite genuine, um, and then it's being repeated as well, there's now a huge problem. Uh, so I sort of brought like an awareness to that and then also offered up some solutions. And I think that is the thing that really frustrates me the most is when somebody has no ownership of their mistakes. You know, if they have maybe played their army wrong for an entire tournament, they could have done more homework. They could have just read the paragraph about their army. It's, it takes 20 seconds yeah. to know what you can and can't do. It's very simple. Um, and to get that wrong, you've not only cheated in that one game, but you've then also cheated all the games before, any other tournaments you've played at, all those practice games of your friends, you cheated them as well. But at what, at what cost? What, what do you, you win a trophy. Great. I, I want to win because I was the best general. I want to be able to shake you know, the hand of my opponent and go, you deserve to win that because your list is awesome or you've played that incredibly well or, you know, and vice versa. So um, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest frustration I have. If I've made a, a dramatic mistake and, um, and if I'd have felt like that mistake had gained me an advantage in my previous games, at that point, if you've only become aware of it at that stage, go to the judges and tell them. Maybe I would probably instantly concede the game I had and say, look, I don't want to win this game. I've been playing this incorrectly. I shouldn't be even this far in the tournament. And let me go and speak to the judges about you know, what I can do next. Um, and I'd probably still play in the tournament, but I wouldn't want any of my scores to count. And I think uh, there was one tournament that I actually ran. Um, it was the first ever tournament after lockdown. And I had to play because we could only have 30 people in a room. It was when lockdown, there was like releases on how many people you could have in, after COVID. So I had to be a player and I also had to ref because at the time to run a tournament, you had to have 30 players. And um, I had one command point off in my army list and um, somebody raised it. I just didn't use a stratagem correctly because I was so focused on refereeing, COVID, you name it, PZ, you know, just getting everything sorted. I probably put less attention on my own army list. And um, yeah, I emailed Frontline Gaming, who basically are the board of giving out what we call our world ranking points, the ITC points. And I said, scrap every single point I gained from that event. I think I came fourth or third or something. I said, I don't want any points. Please take them all away from me. Um, and I'd look back and I don't think it would have affected any of my games. And I could have probably asked all of my opponents did it and they probably would have said no. Um, but, you know, there needs to be some level of accountability and go, hey, it's one tournament. So I didn't get my rankings this you know, I played it wrong, lesson learned, move on. And I think more people would be less frustrated about that if people went, hey, I got it wrong. I don't want any points. And then people would go, cool, I don't mind, that's fine. There's some repercussion for bad behavior, bad attitude, or, um, you know, and there's different ways, right? There's code of conducts that we have, like I'm gonna be polite and professional the whole time we play. Um, if somebody starts swearing at me, which that certainly happened before, you know, it's just to always remain cool and like, I suppose, calm and collected really through that experience. But, you know, we can all go through bad days, right? And I think if more people are just a little bit more accepting of their mistakes, it's a bit more forgivable as well. Five, please. Oh, five wounds. So, yeah. 
and it's something that I try to really get across to people is forget about how many games you win or lose. Forget about that. We get a, there's a real emphasis on, I went three and two, I need to go four and one next time. Well, you've just put a load of bag load of pressure on yourself, which is ludicrous because you could just end up with really bad matchups. And you're gonna now go away from that really disheartened. So what I teach people to do is focus on their points they score in the game. So maybe the first time you play, you score 12 points. Okay, great, how do we get that up to 15? How do we get up to 25? What are the things you need to do at this stage to get up to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80? And all of a sudden, those 80, 90 points you're scoring in every single game, some of those will convert to you winning. And that's great. That's a nice, steady improvement of people being able to look at their data, look at their results, and think critically about their mistakes and take some ownership for it, rather than blaming the dice or having other, any other escape route than actually, did I make mistakes? Yeah, I did. I definitely could have done things differently. Um, did my opponent make more mistakes? Yeah, cool. Well, got off lightly then. Um, but yeah, that's, a, I suppose, a much healthier attitude I've had. And I think it's really come from that, that background of um, bodybuilding, really, for so many years, yeah. My video created a conversation. It allowed more people to step up um, so one of my sponsors of Frontline Gaming, they, uh, the, the events company in, in America, they run all the largest events, they're a fantastic uh, company and um, they really love that ethos that I have, which is kind of why we're a great partnership, but they've improved their code of conduct because of it. I was interviewed on their podcast, it, it was something in which really started to, I suppose, yeah, create a conversation. Um, Games Workshop asked me to consult on their player packet for their Warhammer events at the time. Um, I became a play tester and it, it just, it's just one of those things in which I do get a lot of people say to me, oh, I love the fact that this is your thing that you've done for the community or thanks for you know, helping me challenge other people at the tabletop or be confident to just go get a ref. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's made some impact. Have, we, have I solved it? No, I've got a lot more work to do, I think, especially after this weekend, there's still more to be done. Um, and, uh, but how do we make it the thing to do is play the game the right way? How do we make that the, the core principle of when we, when we meet at the table, we, we want to be on the same page and that's more important than like, anything else. Right? So yeah, still more work to be done. Just remember where possible, if you can, remember to explain what you are hitting on and what you're wounding on, or at least explain your strength. Everybody plays Eldar and Freedom. Absolutely, but total clarity here, okay? I'm just gonna pick. I'm just gonna pick my models up, man. That is, no, I'm just gonna pick models up. For us, it was a case of seeing what it's like to go to a tournament, to meet different people, to play against anybody in a random setting, and the way the Warhammer tournaments work is that if you win one game, the next game you'll play against somebody else that's also won a game. So the first round is random then you go on to a player winner. If you win that game, you play on somebody else against, that's also then won two games, so on and so forth. Um, while everybody else would, if you lost your first game, you'd play someone that also lost your, their first game. So what it starts to do is put people at an even playing field. So you get an experience that is one in which you are playing against people at the same sort of caliber and skill level. So it means you've got nice, fair, balanced games. Um, so day one, um, I did really well. I was really, really, I had some amazing opponents. I played against the Zinch Demon Army. They're incredible at doing psychic powers. They're really hard to kill. And uh, it's actually a really hard matchup for me, but I played an awesome opponent. Um, and he did actually say to me, Steve, I've watched your tournament prep classes. So if I, uh, if I win this game, you can blame yourself. I was like, great, okay. I, was like, I want that as a testimonial. So, um, but I managed to win that game. And um, then the next game, I was up against a, oh, so many, this is like, it feels like two weeks ago now. Um, I was up against, I played a World Eaters army that's super hard to play against, um, against a guy that I've already played from Team Scotland. He was an awesome opponent as well. Um, managed to just about win that game. Um, so yeah, I managed to win three games on, on day one. I've also played against another friend of mine called Paulie. We've played before with Drakari. It's a beautiful army. That's absolutely stunning. We, he's a very renowned uh, Drakari player, real expert. Managed to just win that one. So three, three, real, three real tough games day one. 
And then we're into day two, round four. We've turned up. <laughs> you guys have turned up and uh, we've got a camera. We've got multiple cameras, we've got microphones. And I asked my opponent, hey, you know, we're gonna be doing some filming this, of this a game, is that okay? And he's like, yeah, sure, 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 okay. And I've met this person before. So he's not unfamiliar with me. We've met through playing in the World Team Championships when I was United Nations captain many years ago. And um, it came to my attention that he was getting a few of his army rules wrong. And these are rules in which are fundamental to your army, okay? So it's something that if you're at the, we're basically both three and oh, we're both undefeated at this point. It's a high caliber of level now. This isn't someone's first event. This isn't somebody's first game. And this isn't a rule that you should really be getting wrong. You know, there's a real difference in, oh, I didn't know I could use that. Oh, you know, that, that can happen. And I, I certainly made a mistake. I thought a stratagem I could use on two different units, I couldn't. Really sorry about that. Certainly mistakes are gonna be made. Um, but when it's the first thing, and I've just realized that, that getting your army wide rule means you've played that entire thing that affects every single unit in your army, not just one little one-off occasion, massive impact. It means then the game before, the game before that, and the game before that one, it's been wrong. So I've got a TO over one of the judges to say, hey, this is the situation that we're in. Um, is there anything you want to do? And I, and I kind of gave the, put the ownership then on the referee. And a few more things happened. So the, I had to bring the referee back over, look at the rule interaction. Um, and I would say I've got a fairly decent concept of what the rules are and not. Okay. Just that out. So you've been doing that all event? Sorry? You've been advancing them and shooting them up until all events so far? Um, so it's very easy for me to pick up on mistakes. And also I'm a big fan of conduct, right? So let's communicate properly you know, tell me what you want to do. Um, because if you don't communicate very well, you can gain a very big advantage by looking at the dice rolls and then saying what you wanted to do. And that's really big because there's no risk. It's all reward, isn't it? It's, I roll this dice, let's do this because that's what I can do rather than I could fail this. So should I do, should I not, Oh, maybe I'll just go for it. Oh, and, oh, what if I don't roll enough? You know, there's not that element of decision-making, so. Obviously, just make sure you roll, like, declare it first before you roll. Or, yeah, the thing is that I, I didn't know who I could declare. Or, or we just, the other option we could have done is just mark his original position. Do you see what I mean? Because it's quite big, obviously. Unfortunately, yeah, it was getting to the stage where I was being, trying to keep my composure, but the amount of referees I had to keep getting over to look at rules interactions. And um, the game went on for so long, I got to the point where, um, unfortunately, maybe fortunately for me, potentially. I was doing a meet up with my team and the you know fans of the channel. Uh, that was at 12.15. We were like round three. We were really running behind due to the amount of referees I had to keep getting over. And my opponent, I felt, was pushing their luck, trying to really, oh, I want to be this and I want to be that. And I was like, well, let's just get a ref to decide. It, and then every single time it went into, they agreed with me. And I'm just like, ref, can you look at this, please? And then I step away. And then it's let the ref decide. And if the ref decides on my opponent on a measurement, cool. I don't, that's fine. Leave it to the ref. Um, so I lost that game. Um, and I'm not worried I lost. I'm worried in the way that it happened. And I felt that my opponent had got away with far too much at the table without any sort of repercussion at the time. Um, which was, you know, quite disappointing. Uh, I documented everything. I sent it to the TOs and the referees. And that I documented basically the, the number of mistakes some of them are just hearsay, obviously it's just my opinion. And some of them that I also noted down which referee saw what part. So there was evidence and they could look at that. Um, now that's quite a hefty amount of background and evidence I had to put into that just to make sure that this person wouldn't then cheat the next person. And if I wouldn't have done that, 
and this is kind of my, I suppose, like plea to the community. If you are playing, talk to the judges. If you feel like you've ever, ever been wronged, go and talk to a judge. Never, ever be worried to, to challenge somebody to say, can I, just, can I just check your rule book? That sounds a bit crazy to me. Sounds a bit too good to be true. Can I check your rule book, please? Oh, it's not what it says here. Let's go get a judge. So um, in the next game, they made one of the same mistakes that they did in my game. The judge docked them 10 points as a bit of a warning. They lost that game. They went to the next round. And then I get a message late at night saying, hey, I've played against the person you have. They've tried X, Y, and Z against me. What do I do? I said, go and speak to the judges first thing. So now Games Workshop have red carded that player. They've been, they're not allowed to play any more games. So there's, yeah, there's been some sort of action. But if I wouldn't have taken that first step to document everything, to kind of kick up a fuss um, or make a stand, then this player would have gone through probably each of the next few games. And he could have even been the one with the golden ticket today. He could go and win the entire event when you're obviously making up your rules. He could be the one flying over to the World Team Championships and he could carry on cheating and win the whole thing. And then all of a sudden, we've got somebody that's won an event that really shouldn't have. So um, yeah, at least now there's some sort of, uh, I suppose, recompense for their actions. And I hope they look at that in really, maybe a little bit you know, sorry for what they did um, and the people that they've cheated even before me. And hopefully they've got something in them to change as well. But that comes with it. They need to accept that first. Yeah. You probably you you really saw me at my worst. You really did, and it was something in which it's very difficult when you're you're just not on the same page, and it's so hard to for me just step back, keep my composure. So I make sure I'm always polite. I don't swear. I really try to avoid raising my voice and just kind of keep it very neutral. This is what the rule says. I don't believe you can do that. Can we get a judge? And just go step one, step two, step three. Um, and yeah, it's just a very, it's not the game I would love to show off. I would, I don't really want to be having this conversation because if I'm having this conversation, I don't want it to ever put anybody off. But we know there's always a, maybe a bad apple in every single barrel, right? Um, and I just, was just unfortunate to some degree that obviously you guys had to see that um, because all the other games I've played, we should have filmed those because that would have given an amazing, amazing emphasis of what it's truly like to play a tournament. I shared laughs, tears, sweat, everything was thrown down at those games and I would love to play any of those opponents I've played today, yesterday, maybe obviously aside from that one individual, but all of those other games, I'd love to play any of them, ever, you know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm sure and I would hope they would say the same for me. And that's really what this game's about is you meet people, you see them week on week. You know, it's, it's built a community for me. Tough game. David's an awesome opponent. We've had some fantastic interactions. Um, I've been really looking forward to playing David as well. So um, I'm playing against David's Necrons. He's got a very, very tough army to kill. Right. Come on, Mira Sword Lady. Show Jane Zah who's boss. Come on. She's gonna do it, mate. Here we go. Sixes. She's had a bit of a whiffer, but two sixes, so they go back in. Ben, who I played in the last game, is a teammate of mine. He, um, the first time we ever met a tournament, he tabled me, completely destroyed me in two turns, and we've become best friends. I don't know why, but anyway, we've become best friends ever since. Um, we practiced together. We've flown to multiple international events together. I've stayed around his house. He's staying around mine. He's met my family. My mum's cooked him. You know, it's become, he's become like a real, you know, like best friend for me because of this incredible game. And uh, yeah, we, we just played again. We literally, we, it's random, like I've said, and we always play. It's ridiculous. And it's like fate, like he wins, I win. He wins, I win. He won today, so I'll win the next event next time we play. That'll probably be in two weeks time, whenever. But um, yeah, that's really what this game's about is, if, if anything, I've, I've got Ben as a friend, I've got Jack as a friend and all everybody else, Jake who I do my channel with, everybody else I've kind of met through this game. Um, they're so important to me. And uh, yeah, it's all thanks to this awesome hobby, yeah. The first thing you've got to realize is, you, it's trying to decipher the difference between somebody intentionally cheating and somebody accidentally getting a rule wrong. And that can be really hard. So I always give benefit of the doubt, first of all. Hey, no worries. It's not played like that. 
Or like I said, if it sounds too good to be true, can I just check your rules? Open it up. Let's look, page, whatever, cool. Oh, no, that's not what it says. And if you disagree, let's just get a judge. And this is the, my best advice is to say, let's go ask a judge or a TO or a referee how they would like us to play this rule for the remaining of this event. And then that way you're putting the ownership on the referees. You, it's not a conflict at all. All you're saying is let's get a referee to check how we should play this. Um, now, if that same referee has to keep coming back over and over again because this is happening or you're having to remind your opponent you're not allowed to move that far or I think you've over moved or um, this kind of constant amount of just pushing the boundaries of what's maybe fair. It's time to speak to a ref. Can you just watch my game, please? I'm not happy with my player's conduct. I feel like they're you know, taking advantage. And if you're not comfortable doing it at the table because they're there, absolutely fine. Make sure you go and speak to a TO after privately. That's really important. So then they can keep an eye for the next game. I suppose my last piece of advice is never ever be, you don't owe that person anything. Yeah, sure, you've paid for a five, six round event. And maybe you've paired someone that they're, if they're willing to cheat and you've, you've, you're kind of on that, you've, you've registered that, that they're not on the same page as you, you're not playing the same game, so just walk away. You don't owe them anything, pack up your models, walk away and go, cool. If the game really means that much to you, you wanna win that badly, you can have it. And I think if more people did that, and these people would all of a sudden go to a tournament and nobody would play them, that, I think that would speak volumes, because what are they gonna do, post online that they won an event when every single person refused to play them? I think that speaks more for their you know, etiquette at the table than it does their, you know, obviously they won a tournament. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, you don't owe anybody anything. And if you don't want to spend three hours doing that, then don't do it. Go and sit down and chill out or, you know, walk around the event. And I'd much rather, especially at Warhammer Fest, there's much better things you could be doing than playing somebody you don't really want to play. Yeah. I'm too. Okay. I need you to pick it up by quite a bit. I'll, I'll like to be back over here. I'll get involved. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so I think um, what happens next, I think a little bit of ownership needs to fall on Games Workshop, do. And I, I think, or some of the big tournament organizers or the people that are giving out ranking and points and things, the things that like, you know, when you see people go, oh, I'm ranked X in the world, you know, that obviously means something to them. So how do, they obviously, those ranking systems are then, putting these people in a position where that's what they're looking for. So great, if their conduct at the table isn't at the right place, a yellow, a red card, a ban, whatever that kind of system looks like, cool, you've been caught cheating now, We're not, you're not allowed to score, or you know, all of your ITC or, or whatever points they are, they're called, and I use the term ITC, but there's lots of different ranking systems. Whatever it is, there needs to be something to go right, zeroed until that player can come back, learn from their mistakes. And Frontline Gaming have done that before. There was a, an instance where they said, right, for the next year, this person's not scoring any points. So Frontline with the ITC points did that. Um, but I think more tournaments need to start taking this ownership and not let one player go from one event. Because if that player I played today goes to his next tournament and they're not aware of what they did, it's going to do exactly the same. Um, so it's going to take something quite significant, I think, to track these players and really hold them accountable. I think if they're unable themselves to hold themselves accountable. Tell me what you're going to do before you do it. Uh, don't do anything offensive. Just need to roll the same. We can wait. Don't worry. We have plenty of time. Like I said, especially with lunch coming up, we have loads and loads of time. He's going to come get you. Yeah, so I think Games Works are very clear on the ethos in terms of, you know, they do try and pitch the play the game the right way and um you know that the, there's a little code of conduct and things but it's you know and it's, it's amazing to see what they've done here today to give that opponent like a red card and you know disqualify from the event i was really really happy to see that um and maybe that is the start of things and i really hope it is and maybe it's maybe they didn't term it a red card or whatever but some sort of disqualification um but hopefully that is the start of seeing some sort of actionable things to happen 
um, the follow-up from that. It, will this person be allowed to come back to the next event? I don't know. And maybe that's the kind of this disqualification. Probably I would just like to see it tracked or there for there to some be some sort of recompense going forward for this person to learn from their mistakes. Um, but I mean, 10th edition, they've said it's going to be much more streamlined. Great. You know, we've already seen a few things that Games Workshop have shown off. Um, and it will be much simpler to go, hey, can I just check that? Hey, it's just right in front of me. It's not, you know, so that will certainly help in the way that they present the rules. That's awesome. They, they're already doing so many amazing things with, you know, putting out the code of conduct, having it there. And they really have at this event tried to make everybody play. And the whole thing has been about you will lose a game. So the more important thing is to make a friend, which is kind of the exact same ethos I have. But yeah, I think on these odd, very, very rare occasions for there to be some heavy consequences for those individuals, yeah. I'm really excited about 10th edition. I really am. And I think the work that I've done in the community and then also because I've done it, other people have had the kind of confidence to do so as well. It's really drive that conversation. And the more we keep talking about it and the more it becomes the done thing, then all of a sudden, actually, it's not, it's not cool to do that, that type of behavior here. So... I think it will become less and less and less. So yeah, I mean, I'm much more happier in the environment now than I've ever been. And I'm sure that in another, you know, one, two, three years time, it's going to only improve again. So yeah, I'm certainly, uh, yeah, I think the future is very bright, yeah, for the game. Yeah, so my one piece of advice, if you're looking to get into the tournament scene, is buy a ticket. Just buy a ticket. Do not let anything in your head stop you. And this is like, you know, I've, my business literally helps people do this exact thing is, not even go to tournaments, but even have the confidence to go to their local gaming club. Never let anything hold you back. Your army's not painted. Sure, do the minimum you possibly can to the best of your efforts to get it ready. Don't worry about if maybe this isn't quite painted how you want it to be. Just get going, just paint it, do what you can, and buy a ticket, learn your rules and go. Don't let anything in your head that might be holding you back stop you, because I can guarantee it, you're gonna absolutely love it. You're going to meet some incredible people. You might even have a best friend, Ben, like I found. So, uh, yeah, honestly, um, just go. Don't let anything in your head stop you. So if you'd like to find more about what I do with Vanguard Tactics, then you can head over to our YouTube channel, Vanguard Tactics. You can find us on Instagram and also check out our website, www.vanguardtactics.com, to see all of our courses. Whether you're just getting into playing, you can jump on one of our Start Playing courses, or maybe you want to join our Academy course, which is our much more in-depth we show you the tactics and the strategies of really how to master this incredible game. So if you want any help, come and find us, yeah.